Last class we started learning about the timer counter. The timer counter is a very popular device and the very first. So, we have an n and a half digit counter. and a display, suitable display. We have a gate that feeds this counter, we have a reset signal to the counter <coughs> and the output of the gate goes to the clock of the counter. Now, the counter simply counts the number of clocks given to it and then displays it. Right? And if you want to make any proper measurement, you reset the counter, make it 0, 0, 0 and then count the clock and make the count proportional to whatever you want to measure. Right? <coughs> if I want to measure frequency of uh, an unknown signal. right? So, what we do is we give the unknown signal as x 1, this is f x, then we give a reset signal. And after reset, we give a known pulse width T s and at the end of uh, T s, the count value will be number of T x pulses in T s, which will be f x provided T s is 1 second or 1 millisecond or 1 microsecond. If T s is 1 second, we give we get f x in hertz. If it is 1 millisecond, we get the count reflecting f x in kilohertz. If uh, T s is uh, 1 microsecond, then we get the T uh, x, uh, the count giving f x in megahertz. Right? On the other hand, we can interchange, this is x 2. Now, I give x 1. a time period T x I want to measure, x 2 we give a standard frequency f s, this is also f s is equal to 1 by T s and uh, as usual we give a reset signal at the so, as soon as I get the reset signal, the counter will be made 0 and it will start counting from here to here. It will give me the number of T s pulses in T x. So, it will give me the number of uh, T s pulses in number of T s pulses in uh, T x. I think I have made a mistake. Number of this is T s by T x. There was a mistake. This must be T s by T x, then only I will get f x, right. f x into T s, of course. If T s is 1 second, then f x is in hertz. So, in this case, I get T x by T s, it will give me the count value. If T s is in milliseconds, I will get milliseconds. If T s is in seconds, I will get seconds. If T s is in microseconds, I will get T x in terms of microseconds. Right? And uh, I can make both x 1 and x 2 to be f a and f b. Right? So, if I do that, then whether I use this or here, if I put x 1 is equal to some frequency a, x 2 is equal to some other frequency b then count 
it does not matter which mode I use, I will get either <coughs> F A by F B or F B by F A, right. If I use this mode, I may get F A by F B, if I use get this mode, I will get F B by F A, we get ratio, right. And in the last class, we also learned that I can start and stop and making this pulse width, right. Then I get the elapsed time between the start time and the stop time. The elapsed time mode can be from two different signals or manual. I can push a button saying so start now, stop now, then the elapsed time mode become a stopwatch mode and uh, the uh, if it is automatic, it gives me uh, the time elapsed between a start signal and a stop signal, right. So, all these are uh, uh, possible, right. And if I want to make this timer counter to measure either frequency or time period, then I need to give a standard time or a standard frequency, right. A standard time pulse width or a standard frequency, right. In that, we started learning about the crystal oscillator. We can use an RC oscillator or an LC oscillator, but the frequency of an RC oscillator will not be very, very accurate, right. R will change, especially C will change depending upon the uh, environmental conditions, right. So, you may get, if you do not take care, a large error in T s and F s, right. Even if you take care, you put standard capacitors, standard resistors, right you may not get uh, the kind of accuracy that we need, right. Uh, people have uh, discovered that <coughs> using a piezoelectric crystal, you can build what are known as crystal oscillators, which give you very, very stable frequency or uh, time period. The principle is uh, based on piezoelectric crystals, the natural choice is uh, silicon dioxide crystal, which is popularly known as quartz. So, sometimes we also call the crystal oscillators as quartz oscillator, right. Piezoelectricity right, is uh, a phenomena that occurs in uh, most of the anisotrophic type of crystals, right. The anisotrophy means that if I look at the crystal lattice in each direction, it is different, right. So, one crystal that uh, is abundant in nature, the silicon dioxide sand, right, uh, is a very good piezoelectric material, right. The, if I look at the uh, structure of a molecule of silicon dioxide, the crystal structure. I have three silicon atoms with uh, three oxygen atoms. Okay. They share the electrons. So, the O2 becomes minus, silicon becomes plus, this is minus, plus, plus, right. this is minus. Okay. So, now if I apply a force <coughs> and move the compress the crystal a little bit. Now, what happens is when I move like this of course, the whole structure moves right like this. So, this O 2 goes up, the silicon comes down. So, if I look at on the surface, the positive ion has moved in, 
the negative ions are almost at the same place. So, there would be a net negative charge here. Similarly, here the negative ion has moved in, positive has kept in its same place. So, I will get a positive. <coughs> that is why the name piezoelectric. Piezo means pressure. When I apply pressure on the crystal, I get electricity, right? Because if I have two parallel plates here, I have charges generated, right? So the charge generated, if I have a capacitance, let's say this is the C, I will get a voltage V, where the um, voltage generated is q by c right piezo electricity uh, is reversible right uh, most of the materials also possess another property called the uh, electrostriction right which is uh, proportional to the square of the applied pressure so you will always get the same polarity whether you have apply positive pressure or negative pressure in this case piezo electricity if I now expand this crystal, the charge would be different, right? Because when I expand, positive will go towards, if I expand, let me show it to you. So, if I expand, positive will move here. So, I will get plus, 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 right? This is for this force, I will get minus, minus, minus. So, this will expand like this. Okay. So, piezoelectricity is reversible. If I reverse the direction of uh, force, the direction of the voltage induced on the piezoelectric crystal also reverses. Right. Uh, the what is generated is charge and that charge gets manifested as the voltage because of the capacitance of the crystal. Okay. So, electrostriction is uh, proportional to the applied pressure square. So, whether I apply positive pressure or negative pressure, I get the same thing. Right? And uh, as I already said, piezoelectricity is possible only in anisotropic type of crystals. So, why is it that this kind of uh, crystal gives us a precise oscillator? Right? Because now, if I look at this crystal, it has two different uh, faces. On the one side, I have a capacitance, I have a voltage induced, I have a charge generated. That is on the electrical side. right? On the mechanical side, I have the crystal having a volume, right? some dimensions. So, the crystal, that particular volume of crystal will have a mass, will have a viscous property and elastic property right so this becomes an electromechanical device which has to be looked into both from the mechanical side as well as electrical side right on the electrical side because we are electrical engineers we can very quickly write the electrical side so i have my i call this a ce and any material will have a leakage resistance, right? <coughs> Quartz, of course, is uh, best insulator. Right? Its leakage resistance will be very, very large, but there will be a leakage resistance. So that would be the circuit, as far as the crystal is concerned. Quartz crystal is concerned, right? And I have the charge generated. So let me. put the charge generated right <coughs> that would feed the capacitor now that doesn't complete the uh, entire crystal because i need the mechanical side i'll have to consider mechanical side how it's going to respond if i apply a particular force f how it's going to respond right so on the mechanical side if i look at I have a mass m and I have a viscous damping d and 
a spring K and we apply a force F and this may move by X. So, force can be up or down. Okay. Now, if I look at this system, right, I know force is equal to mass m into acceleration d x square by d t square. sorry d square x by d t square right. Then I also know that some of the force has to overcome the damper right. So, that would be plus d into velocity of right either frictional damping or viscous damping the energy required is velocity times the frictional coefficient or viscous coefficient right. To overcome the spring I need to provide some energy. So, this would be K s into x right that would be the force. So, I have to solve this equation on the mechanical side I have to solve the electrical equivalent circuit then only I will be able to solve understand the entire functioning of the crystal. So, this is little bit tedious okay. uh, especially for electrical engineers going back into mechanical real uh, doing the uh, solving and trying to understand is difficult. It would be nice if I can replace the mechanical properties of the crystal as an equivalent electrical property right. So, that would be quite simple if we can find an equivalent circuit. Now, if I have a series RLC circuit, I will put LRC circuit because we are going to do it do an equivalent circuit for the mechanical I put the subscript M, M right L M C M and R M. Now, I apply a potential E here right this potential e i can write it as i will write it here e is equal to the voltage drop across let's say i have a current i flowing through this right what is the voltage drop across the inductor lm d i by d t plus r i the voltage drop, drop across the resistance r m into i plus 1 by c into integral c m into i d t right. Now, I know i right what is i let me write it here i is equal to d q by d t right whatever charge that is flowing rate of flow of charge is current. So, now I replace i here with d q by d t I am going to write it on the top so that we can compare. So, I get L m into d square q by d t square plus r into d, uh, d q by d t plus 1 by c m into q is equal to the total e m of e right. So, now let me look at these two equations mathematically they are identical they are second order differential equations. So, if I solve for this or this I will get the same solution right. Now, I can replace 
the mechanical system with an equivalent inductance, the uh, mass of the mechanical system with the equivalent inductance, the viscous damping or frictional damping with resistance and the spring with 1 by capacitance. Right? I solve that electrical system, I solve the original mechanical system. So, this is known as the electrical equivalent, electrical equivalent of the mechanical system. Uh, this is also known as a direct electrical equivalent. There is another one called indirect electrical equivalent of a mechanical system. Let us not look at it right now, that is not our cup of tea. So, I can now replace the mechanical system with L, R, and C. So, now on my equivalent circuit, I can replace So, now that is a total equivalent circuit of the quartz crystal <coughs> or any piezoelectric crystal, right. And uh, if I solve that, I solve overall system including electrical mechanical properties of the crystal, okay. Now, if I look at the network here, electrical network, I have a series resonance. I have a parallel resonance, right. I have a series resonance and I have a parallel resonance. So, if I look at the impedance versus frequency, I call it Z q, right. Initially, this will be open. So, I will start a very large So, this is series resonance, this is parallel resonance. I call it as F s and F p. <coughs> so, we have two resonances possible in the network, right. And uh, what is F s? What is series resonance? F s is equal to 1 by 2 pi root L m and C m, right. These two constitute the resonance. Now, what is L m? It is the equivalent inductance representing the mass of the crystal. As long as I do not shave off the crystal, I do not grind the crystal or chip the crystal, the mass is not going to change, right. C m <coughs> is the elasticity of the crystal, right. And again as long as I do not change the conditions, I keep the temperature, pressure, everything constant, right. The operating conditions remaining the same or changing very little, C m also does not change, right. So, F s which represents the mechanical resonant frequency of the crystal is more or less a constant, right. It does not vary much. <coughs> now, if I build an oscillator circuit using F s, I will get a frequency which would change if and only if the mass changes or the compliance or elasticity changes, right, which we already learned that does not change much, right. So, easiest way of making an oscillator is use two inverters, get the 360 degrees that is required for right. This is the quartz crystal. The output that I get from this oscillator, the frequency will be determined by the series resonance of the crystal, which is nothing but the mechanical resonance, which does not change provided I keep the environmental conditions constant, right. So, you, you can have a 100 megahertz oscillator, right. <coughs> so, which means I have 100 
1, 2, 3 plus or minus 1 hertz, right. We see that the error is parts per million, right, fraction of parts per million. In fact, 0 0.1 parts per billion, okay. So, we can, we do not even express it in terms of percentage because percentage will become 0 0.001 not, 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 not percent, right. So, all the timer counters, right, all the timer counters that you can find in the market <coughs> will use a crystal oscillator. Uh, popularly known as the quartz oscillator <coughs> and uh, to make this kind of accuracy, the crystal is maintained at a particular temperature, right. There is a small oven inside which keeps the crystal temperature constant, so that your oscillating frequency does not change, right. Initially people used quartz, right. And, uh, Quartz of course, is an excellent piezoelectric material, it is available abundantly in nature, but making quartz is pure quartz is little bit difficult number one. Number two, the <coughs> L m and C m that you get for making a particular F s for quartz is not very nice, right. Uh, for example, if I want let us say 32.768 kilohertz. Right. I want a quartz crystal which resonates at 32.768 kilohertz, right. Then the size of the quartz that I require to make this resonance will be this big, right. And uh, that is not a small size, right. That is a large size and unnecessarily just for making an oscillator you need such a large size. Right? So, we need materials, piezoelectric materials that not only gives me piezoelectricity, but also the coefficient 1 by root L m C m is manageable, practically manageable, right. Uh, so, again in the past people have invented materials, I said invented, because these are the materials that do not occur in nature, it is man made material. They are known as ceramics, piezoelectric crystal, one popular material is uh, barium titanate, <coughs> uh, when I say ceramic, the name ceramic comes because we use ceramic for several applications, right. We have ceramic insulating discs, we also have ceramic cups for uh, making our tea. So, what you do is we make a material paste, then sinter it in an oven at a very high temperature, bake it to get the material. So, barium titanate is also made like that, that is why it is called a ceramic, right. And uh, when we make a barium titanate, uh, the 1 by root L m C m is quite manageable in the sense it can you can make very small size right instead of a quartz crystal which has to be this size for 32 kilohertz you have a size of about 2.5 millimeter by 0 0.8 or 0 0.9 millimeter right really small to make 32.768 kilohertz i keep saying 32.768 kilohertz can anyone tell me why because that's the frequency of uh, the crystal in all of our watches, right. You, you may have a quartz watch, right, but that is a misnomer. There is no quartz crystal inside. There is a ceramic crystal whose frequency is 32.768. Again, why is it 32.768? Why is 32.768? Because if I put a 15 stage divider, I will get 1 hertz, right. 2 power 15 is 32,767, 68, right. So, 
just to get one second pulse for my watch, all I have to do is put a 15 stage, divide by 2 counter, I will get 1 hertz at the output. Right? So, 19, not 19, 100 percent all the quartz watches made in the world use the 32.768 kilohertz uh, as the crystal frequency and that crystal is not quartz, but some ceramic. It may not be barium titanate, barium titanate was one of the very first right, uh, ceramics made. Uh, you have other materials like zirconates also giving excellent piezoelectric properties. So, once we have the oscillator, so I have the quartz crystal oscillator temperature control. Now, I can put dividers, please remember this is a T digital oscillator right 10 one zero, one zero, one zero. So, I can divide them using the same flip flops that I have used for the counter right. So, I can put divide by 10, divide by 10, divide by 10. So, generally you get 10 hertz, 1 hertz, sorry 0.1 hertz. 1 hertz, 10 hertz, 100 hertz and all the way up to 100 megahertz. Most the typical timer counter will have an 100 megahertz basic oscillator, right. More than 100 megahertz, it is a little bit difficult. You can get a 1 gigahertz oscillator, definitely not a 100 gigahertz oscillator, but 1 gigahertz or 10 gigahertz but they will be very, very expensive. So, 100 megahertz is a very standard highest value of the internal oscillator that is possible. So, all the other signals are derived from this. If I want to give x 2 as 1 second, I use the 1 hertz pulse. If I want to give x 2 as 10 seconds, I use the 0 0.1 hertz pulse, right. Uh, very rarely some, some uh, see, uh, timer counter manufacturers give also 100 seconds, right. 100 seconds is uh, too long a period to wait. If you are waiting for 100 seconds, you lose your patience. So, 10 seconds is the uh, most popular one at the lowest end, right. And you can go all the way up to 0 0.01 microsecond, right. That is 100 megahertz. So, these signals are derived and used as x1 or x2, right. Now, if I look at the uh, operation of the uh, this RST, the two modes or any mode, right. We restart, reset which means the counter goes to 0, 0, 0 and then we start counting within T x or within T s, the counter will go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and at the end I get the reading, right. Here we get the reading at this point, which is with respect to time, right. So, depending upon the times that I have chosen T x, T s and the reset pulse width, after I start my measurement, I get a reading at the end of the count, right. So, there is always the response time of the counter, right. So, this is the minimum time I require. getting one reading, right. That is the minimum time I require for one reading, okay. So, within the reading, if I look at this counter will go to 0 and the counter will start counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and then maybe finally, I will get a count 1234. So, you will see that the counter is really counting fast and that is an irritant, right. Every time I want to make a measurement, I see the digits rolling over, right. That is not very nice to look at. So, what we do is, we do not put the display immediately, we put a latch, 
right. We put a latch, a digital latch, this is another set of flip flops, right. And whatever is the output of the counter does not go to the display directly, it goes through the latch, right. So, I start the reset one and then at the end of the reading, I give latch, right. This is the latch signal. I say latch, the value in the counter will be latched to the display. So, I will not see the display rolling over during the period of counting, right. So, I can get, I will restart, it will go to 0, 0, 0. I will not even see that 0, 0, 0, because internally the counter is 0, 0, 0, it is not displayed, right. And the first latch comes, <coughs> the count value will be displayed. Okay. So, the number of latches I give in a given period is the number of displays I am going to get in that period. Let us say I am going to give a latch signal every 1 second, I do not have to give it at the end, right. If the end, let us say I have given T s as 1 millisecond, I want to measure f x in terms of kilohertz, right. I can give the latch at the end of 1 millisecond and the reset time may be some 200 nanoseconds, right. So, 1.002 seconds I give, I can give a latch and get the reading, which means approximately every 1 millisecond I am going to get one reading, I will get 1000 readings per second, right. If I make this T s as 1 millisecond, maximum display update rate, I call it as maximum display update rate, right. The display is going to be updated and that rate would be 1000 per second, 1000 displays per second. Now, if you get 1000 displays in 1000 seconds, it will be very, very difficult for me to read, right, because I need at least 300 millisecond to respond, right. That is the visual response time for any human being. Some of us can be fast, but we cannot really beat that 300 millisecond. We, you may, some of you might say, okay, I can read it uh, in 100 millisecond, but minimum persistence that we need is 300 millisecond. So, thousands per second also will look the display as blinky, right. So, most of the timer counters, the latch frequency right. The latch frequency is also adjustable, right, variable latch frequency. So, even though my measurement is over in 1 millisecond, I will say I will take readings every 1 second, right. So, the display will change only once in 1 second. So, I have all the time in the world to look at and understand what the output of the counter is, right. This is especially true if my input x 1 is varying a little bit, right. I will not have the uh, displays rotating, right. I mean displays changing very fast. So, you have another control apart from choosing the T s and uh, F s you have another control known as display update rate, right. You can choose anywhere between uh, 5 or 6 displays a second to once in 3 seconds, once in 5 seconds, that would be the, right. So, when you change that display update rate, what you are changing is only this reset and latch, right. This combination will happen only at the specified rate that you have given, irrespective of the timing of the rest of the counter, right. So, obviously, you cannot say I will display every 1 second when your timing requires 10 seconds to measure, right. I can put T s as 10 seconds, right, to measure frequency. For example, if I want to measure 50 hertz, right, if I want to measure 50 hertz and I put T s is equal to 1 second, right, my measurement is 50 hertz. 
f x is equal to 50 hertz and I put T s is equal to 1 second, what will be the count I will get? In 1 second I will have 50 cycles of 50 hertz, right. What, what does 50 hertz mean? 50, 50 cycles second. in 1 second. So, the counter will measure, right. So, I will get a count value 50. How many significant digits I get? Only 2. So, it could be 49 or 51, the error could be plus or minus 1 count, right. We already know that any digital counter timer will have plus or minus 1 count error, right. So, that is not nice. Now, I make T s is equal to 10 seconds, the count I will get in 10 seconds will be 500. So, now I can make a decimal point here and say 50.0, right. So, in the time period mode, the larger time elapse that I give, I get a larger set of significant digits in my count. Please note this decimal point does not come from the counter, the counter is always an integer counter and I had put the decimal point because I know when I go to 10 seconds, I will get 0.1 hertz as the resolution, <coughs> right. So, now my inaccuracy will be 50.1 or 49.9 which will be plus or minus 0.1 hertz, here the inaccuracy will be plus or minus 1 hertz, right. So, by, so when I choose 10 seconds, I cannot put a variable latch frequency which is uh, 1 display a second, because the display will come only after 10 seconds, right. So, the variable latch frequency even though you have control over it, we will be determined at the lower end mainly by the internal timing operation, right. Now, the timer counter that we have discussed so far can accept only digital signals, right. I need 1010 signal, then only I can operate all the circuitry here. But in real life, digital signals are very rare, right. Most of the signals are analog in nature. So, what do we do? We convert the analog signal. into a digital signal, let us say I have a sine wave. Okay. Again I am using a sine wave, so that we can understand better, right. Any simple waveform our understanding is much better. It need not be a sine wave, it can be an arbitrary waveform, right. Now, if I put this to a comparator, right, and uh, I give a particular voltage, I call this as offset, V offset, this is plus V, this is minus V, right. The comparator output will be 1 0 1 0 1 0, 1 if the non-inverting input is higher than the inverting input, 0 if the inverting input is more than non-inverting input, right. So, let us put this uh, signal. So, I can put this is V offset. So, I will get a signal which is so this is output of comparison. output of the comparator. So, by using a simple comparator, we can convert an analog signal into a binary signal 1 0 1 0, right. 
and uh, sometimes what ha what will happen is let us say if I have a signal like this, right. Then if I give it here, I will get a signal. Let me put this in a different color. If I put my offset here, I will get something like this, right. If I measure the frequency, I would be wrong because that is not the frequency. If I measure the time period, sometimes I will get this time, sometimes I will get this time, sometimes I will get this time, right. So, this is T 1 or I can get T 2 or I can get T 3. One of this will be displayed and the display will not be stable, right. So, which means the way that you have put your offset is wrong, you will have to adjust the offset, bring the offset somewhere here. bring the offset somewhere here, so that I get a clean signal. So, I will get here, right. This is uh, V of 1, this is V of 1, output of comparator for V of 1, right. So, by suitably adjusting the offset, we can put that. Now, many uh, timer counter manufacturers will also provide an inversion here. And then either take the input from here or input from here, right either I get as such or inverted input, right. So, this helps by choosing the edge on which you sense. Let us say you have made your counter with a rising edge sensitive flip flops, right. If I give directly the input, my output would be sensitive to the rising edge of my analog input. Now, if I put an inverted signal, right. The counter is still raising edge, but I have inverted my input signal. So, whenever my input signal is going through the falling edge, my counter will become active, right. So, then I be I make the uh, rising edge sensitive counter to respond to the falling edge of my input. So, I get a falling edge sensitive counter. So, by using a simple inverter and selecting either the inverted input or the output of a comparator, we can choose racing edge or falling edge. So, if you look at, at the input of the timer counter, you have these possibilities, attenuation or amplification, right. Like the oscilloscope, the timer counter manufacturer does not know what signal that you have you may have a 100 millivolt signal or 100 volt signal, right. So, you would give an attenuator amplifier for the analog signal. So, if you have 100 volts, you attenuate it by 100 times, you get 1 volt. If you have 100 millivolts, you amplify by 10 times, you still get 1 volt. Then you compare with your comparator, right. Then you have offset adjustment. This is the offset adjustment. You can adjust where you are going to compare and make your analog to digital or binary transition, right. Then you have slope positive or negative. Slope simply means if the slope is positive, I connect directly from the comparator. If slope is negative, I take it from the output of the inverter, right. So, we stop here. We will start looking at the applications of the timer counter in the next class.